When you're a kid, you just watch cartoons. You don't need to really analyze anything. But look back on those same cartoons as an adult and you start noticing odd things. Like for example, in every cartoon you've ever seen, maybe aside from Zootopia, they don't know how ears work. And Cat Dog, where does the poop go? And what about the Powerpuff Girls? I watched them constantly when I was a kid, but I only noticed very recently that they don't actually have fingers and therefore couldn't pick up anything. Or could they? The Powerpuff Girls were a staple of my childhood cartoon lineup, a quirky superhero show that was vibrant and fun, but now that I'm in the business of overthinking everything, I realize that I have to figure out why these stubs can grip and handle objects just like hands. To find out how the Powerpuff Girls' hands worked, I went to the source, animation legend and Powerpuff Girls creator, Craig McCracken. He was kind enough to give me the official explanation. So there you have it, because cartoons. Or could be because science, let's do it. Of course, the internet does have thoughts on Powerpuff Girl anatomy. And I regretted going down this rabbit hole of Powerpuff hand theory. One possibility that Imjurians noted was maybe they have tiny spider hooks on their hands, like spiders. Or maybe they have tiny hands on their hands, like on the underside of a sea star. No, 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 no. Now, tiny spider hooks on the Powerpuff Girls arms could be how they grasp objects, or I guess they could have an undulating mass of tiny hands that help them. Gross. But to me, the Powerpuff Girls, Blossom, Buttercup, and Bubbles were human girls despite their lack of fingers and their odd proportions. So I think the real explanation is a bit more subtle. Instead of adding hooks or hands to the Powerpuff Girls' arms, what if the skin itself was the source of the stickiness? No! Okay. To me, Powerpuff hand theory only fits the evidence that we see in the show if the girl's arms function in one of two ways. And the first possibility is kind of like the spider hooks on their hands, except not as gross. Whew. There are over a thousand species of gecko, and nearly all of them can climb on any surface aside from Teflon. Scientists since Aristotle have been trying to figure out just what makes their feet so sticky. And it wasn't until the early 2000s when scientists finally discovered that they can climb on even glass due to what's called van der Waals forces. Van der Waals forces are a weak, attractive force between two atoms when they are very, very close together. So electrons are always whizzing around the outside of an atom. So if you bring those atoms closer together, there will be instances where the charges are different from electrons and protons, and there will be a small attractive force. And geckos have evolved to take advantage of this nanoscale force. This is a gecko's foot, and on its toes are a number of structures made out of the same thing as human skin, beta keratin. Now, enhance. Down at the microscopic scale, you can see that each of these structures are covered in many, many tiny hairs called setae. Now, enhance again. At the nanoscopic scale, you can see that each one of these setae is covered in over a thousand tinier hairs called spatulae. Now, with literally millions of spatulae on a gecko's foot touching objects down at the nanoscale, those small van der Waals forces can add up and be multiplied into gecko level stickiness. To keep the changes to Powerpuff Girl anatomy minimal yet plausible, Powerpuff hand theory number one is gecko arms. If Chemical X altered the girl's skin in this way, they should be able to touch their limbs to objects and grip them. But I think there's an even more plausible theory. This is what's called a universal gripper, this one made at Cornell University. It uses a squishy end, which is just a balloon filled with coffee grounds, to fit around many different kinds of shapes and grab them. This simple machine works through air pressure. When granular media like coffee grounds are loose, they can move around an object like a fluid, but when those grounds are tightly packed together, the coffee can act like a solid. So the gripper grips by moving around an object when the coffee is loose, evacuating all the air pressure from inside the balloon, becoming like a solid, and grabbing on. 
So here's what I'm proposing for Powerpuff hand theory number two. The Powerpuff Girls' hands are actually universal grippers, and to do this, their hands would just need some squishy granular media at the top of their hands, kind of like adipose tissue or fat, and then this fat could form around objects and then be tightened up by muscles in the girls' hands to grip just like a universal gripper does. And this anatomical change would not be visible from the outside, so it fits with a cartoon. So how do Powerpuff Girls' hands really work? Well, either they are radically mutated by Chemical X such that they have gecko toes on the ends of their arms, or they have squishy ends of their arms that can be tightened like universal grippers. It makes more sense than tiny hands, no! Or spider hooks, okay. And it doesn't even invoke cartoon logic. Either way, you're never gonna look at the Powerpuff Girls' arms the same way again. Because science. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at SciFile where you can suggest ideas for future episodes and on Instagram where I'm now posting mini episodes of Because Science. And on Saturdays on the Science Channel you can catch me hosting Mythbusters The Search, the next Mythbusters show looking for the next Mythbusters. We're doing pretty well among young people and I think that has something to do with all of you who are tuning in to support sciencey stuff that we do. So thank you so much and Hopefully you can check out the rest of it. Thanks to Ubisoft and their new melee combat game For Honor for sponsoring today's show. Will you join the Knights, the Vikings, or the Samurai in the War of the Factions? Go to ForHonorGame.com forward slash war to register for the beta, fight alongside Team Nerdist, and watch as we battle it out. We'll be streaming through January 29th, so pledge your sword and fight for your faction. I made a conscious decision with this episode not to sound youtube -y. There's a linguistics of the YouTube voice, and uh, linguists have been asked about this. It's more about elongating vowels and consonants, adding, adding bounciness to a word. So it's the difference between how I'm sounding now and how I'm sounding now, if that's kind of the thing that you're talking about. So I really tried to uh, uh, flip that for this episode, and I want to see if you noticed.